This paper is about the relationship between attention and action, and it specifically raises a challenge for Wayne Wu's theory of attention as selection for action. My challenge to Wu begins with a dilemma concerning the agential status of attention. Although I think Wu's account can be developed in a way that would avoid this dilemma, I argue that the resulting view has trouble accommodating the intuition that attention can itself be an action, and it also runs into conflict with a promising view of the neural basis of visual attention called biased competition theory. My argument doesn't refute Wu's claim that attention is selection for action. Rather, it provides a constraint on how to develop that thesis. The theory has to explain how attention can be both a necessary component of actions in general, as well as a potential action in its own right. On Wu's view, actions pose a selection problem. In his terms, the agent faces many perceptual inputs on the one hand, and a choice between many potential behavioral outputs on the other. Intuitively, there are many different actions you can perform and many different objects on which to perform each of those actions. These many inputs and potential outputs together yield what Wu calls the agent's behavioral space. To act, you have to select a path through this behavioral space. And the problem of how you do that, how you make that selection, is what Wu calls the many, many problem. According to Wu, attention solves the many, many problem. Attention is the agent's selection of a path through behavioral space, or as he also calls it, uh, attention is the agent's selection for action. Since every action requires a solution to the many, many problem and only attention can solve it, every action requires attention. In particular, every action is guided by the agent's attention to the target of that action. Wu thinks of both the many, many problem and its solution, namely attention, as existing at the personal level. The agent's behavioral space, for example, the set of inputs that she has to select from, are defined in terms of personal level states of the subject, for example, visual experiences. And for action to occur, it has to be the agent herself that selects a path through this space. Without it being the agent that selects, only a pure reflex could result. On the face of things, a challenge for Wu's account arises when we inquire about the agential status of attention on that view. In particular, Wu's, Wu seems to face a dilemma. Either selection for action is an action, or it's a reflex. After all, that distinction between action and reflex is meant to be mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive as a classification of behavior. If it's an action, though, then we're off on a vicious regress. It seems that selection for action cannot be both an action and a precondition for action of any sort. If, however, selection for action is a reflex, then there isn't a role for the agent to play in action. On Wu's view, action requires that it be the agent that select one option out of many. But if selection for action were a reflex, then it wouldn't be the agent that selects, since reflexes do not involve or implicate the agent in any way. So, whether attention is an action or a reflex, it looks like actions are going to turn out to be impossible on this view. I think Wu is most likely to respond to this dilemma by adopting what I'll call the act component proposal. The core idea behind the act component proposal is that selection for action is not an additional thing that you do in order to act in any way that would launch us on a regress, but part of what it is to act. This proposal avoids the dilemma that I've posed by denying that attention is either an action or a reflex. It's not a type of behavior at all, but a component of behavior, specifically a component of actions. There are different ways to develop the act component proposal. One can take attention to be a psychological state of the subject or a psychological process. However, one elaborates the view, attention is never a behavioral output. It's precisely by denying that attention is ever an output, whether an action or a reflex, that the act component proposal is able to avoid the dilemma. So it's an essential commitment of the view. Okay, active attention. Intuitively, it's possible to form the intention simply to attend visually to something. And when you attend in that way, namely as a consequence of your intending to do so, it seems like your attention is itself an intentional action. Wu agrees with this and he calls this variety of attention by a few different names. He calls it controlled attention, voluntary attention, active attention, and attention as action. On the face of it though, the claim that attention is sometimes an action in its own right 
conflicts with the claim that attention is strictly an act component. If attention is an act component, then recall, it's never a behavioral output. But if attention is sometimes an action, then it seems that attention can be a behavioral output, since actions just are a type of output, namely outputs which are guided by the agent's attention to the target of that action. Wu denies that these claims actually conflict. To show why, he has us consider the action of intentionally shifting and maintaining visual attention to an object. This has been demonstrated to alter the appearance of the attended object by, for example, increasing its apparent contrast. With those results in mind, Wu writes the following, that shifting and maintaining attention in this active way is just a type of mental action, altering the appearances of a consciously perceived input or maintaining that alteration. Here, input and output are perceptual states. In different terms, the proposal here is that active attention consists in selecting something in order to highlight, enhance, or sharpen your awareness or experience of that thing. That's the action that you're performing when you actively attend, according to Wu. My first objection to Wu's proposal about active attention here is that it depicts the agent's selection as instrumentally related to an end other than selection itself. On this proposal, you select an object in order to do something to it, namely to modify your perception of it in some way. But the possibility that active attention seems to raise, at least initially or intuitively, is that agents sometimes attend non-instrumentally or for its own sake. And to accommodate that possibility, one would have to allow that you can attend to a thing, that is, select it, without having the further aim of acting on it in any way. Otherwise, the action that you select and your selection of it are going to remain distinct and hence not be a case of attention as action. So by attempting to explain active attention within the parameters of the act component proposal, which depicts every instance of attention as instrumentally related to some end, I think Wu loses what's intuitively distinctive about the phenomenon of active attention, namely its potentially non-instrumental character. Rather than resting my argument on this intuition, I take a different tack for the remainder of the paper. In particular, I argue on empirical grounds that Wu's proposal about active attention mischaracterizes the relationship between attention and perception. I rest my case for this argument on um, the um, bias competition theory of visual attention. In this part of the paper, I identify a tension between Wu's proposal about active attention and a view of visual attention that I see as arising out of the bias competition theory of the neural basis of visual attention. Recall that on Wu's proposal about active attention, the agent selects a certain perceptual input for the purpose of visual enhancement. So in this view, task-biased changes in the agent's uh, visual state are the effects or the outputs of attention. Attention causes an enhanced visual state in the subject. As I read the bias competition theory by contrast, visual attention is most naturally identified with the enhanced visual state itself, which is the resolution or the outcome of competitive interactions taking place throughout the subject's visual system and which is biased by a top-down signal corresponding to the agent's intention to perform some task. So whereas the bias competition theory seems to regard attention as partly consisting in a task bias change or enhancement of one's visual state, Wu's view of active attention implies that attention is instead the cause of that change. This goes against what I take to be the distinctive claim of the bias competition theory, namely that attention is the emergent resolution or outcome of biased competition rather than a causal mechanism that brings about that outcome. I thus see Wu's proposal about active attention as sitting uneasily with an emerging view about the neural basis of visual attention and its relationship to the subject's perceptual state. I close the paper with a few remarks about how one might develop the selection for action account while avoiding the difficulties that I've been raising for it. First, to reconcile the selection for action account with bias competition theory, I suggest that we need to reconsider some of the assumptions behind Wu's discussion of the many, many problem. In particular, I think we have to reject the assumption that the agent's selection is constitutively post-perceptual, that the agent encounters a fully 
constituted class of perceptual inputs from which she then has to select in order to act in some way, including as a special case, selecting for highlighting or perceptual enhancement. The bias competition theory instead seems to identify visual attention with the achievement of a certain kind of motivationally structured input state. Note that this is consistent with the broader claim that attention is selection for action. We can, for example, understand the agent's selection as the result or the outcome of a motivationally guided process, namely the process of bringing perception into a state which is suitable to guide one's action and thereby fulfill one's guiding motivational state. I also note that this revision to the view easily accommodates the intuition that in active attention, agents can attend non-instrumentally. There's no obstacle on this view to attention being an action in its own right, because the task that biases the outcome of neural competitions occurring in the visual system could itself be directed towards the achievement of a certain enhanced visual state. These modifications of the view do require, however, that we reject the act component proposal as well as Wu's claim that every action without qualification possesses attention as a guiding component. Attention, when itself an action, does not require selection for action. Thank you.